is the case is when you have a horizontal line and a vertical line, all right? Then one's zero, one's undefined. We rarely talk about that case. If you have perpendicular lines, though, if one's going up like this, the other one has to be going down to meet it at 90 degrees. If one's going down, the other's, half, that's hard to do, shoulder. The other has to be going up, right? It has to be. So one will be positive, one will be negative. That has to happen, that's a good question. So perpendicular lines, they have slopes which are negative reciprocals. Reciprocals. Hey, let's try a few of these just to make sure we have a handle on this. I'm going to give you some numbers and let's try to find the negative reciprocals, okay? Because it's a good practice for finding the perpendicular slopes. So if I give you one half and I say find the negative reciprocal of one half, negative reciprocal means that I'm going to flip that fraction over and I'm going to change the sign. So if it's positive, it becomes negative. If it was negative, it would become positive. And I'm going to flip that around. So, what's the negative reciprocal of positive one half? Negative two over one. Sure, negative two over one. Could you just put negative two? That'd be fine as well. That's fine. Now, as far as thinking about slope, we do like to have the ratio there, right? They say that the rise in this case would be negative two, go down two to the right one. But you could just write it for your equation as negative two. Are you with me on this? Okay, let's try some more. How about. Um, Negative three-fourths. What's the negative reciprocal of negative three-fourths? Four-thirds. It's not negative four-thirds still? No. no. So no matter what, we have to change the sign. That negative means you're changing the sign there. So here we're going to have yeah, positive four-thirds. For sure. We're going to flip that, and we're going to change the sign. Now, wait a second. What if I just give you a number like negative eight? Can you still find the negative reciprocal of negative 8? Yeah. Okay, so we do make the fraction out of it. Very good. And then, like you said, we're just going to flip that thing around. And yeah. So positive 1 eighth is our answer. Also notice that these things go backwards and forwards. A negative reciprocal of 1 eighth is negative 8. Negative reciprocal of 4 thirds is negative 3 fourths. These are negative reciprocals of each other. How many people feel okay about finding the negative reciprocal? Good deal. Now we're ready to go ahead and accomplish this problem. We've talked about parallel. Parallel meant what type of slopes? Good. Perpendicular meant not the same slope, but slopes which are negative reciprocals. So, on your test, you're going to have these types of questions. Chances are you're probably not going to have a whole lot of questions about um, writing the equation of a line where I give you a point and I give you the slope. More likely, you're going to have the questions where I give you two points, and say write the equation y, right? Where you find the slope, this one right here. Where you find the slope and then you use y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. That's, that's one form that you can have on the test. The other form that you're gonna have on the test is this thing. Find the equation of a line containing a point and parallel or perpendicular to another line. That's what you're gonna have, okay? Those two situations there. The first one we dealt with yesterday, this one we're gonna talk about right now. So, how in the world do we find the equation containing a point and parallel to a given equation? Well, we're back to this situation. We we're given the point, the slope, it's not given. We don't have two points. We're right down here. We need to solve this equation for y because right there we're going to be able to find our slope. So let's go ahead and do that together. Can you solve this equation for y? Yes. How do you do that? Okay. So if we do that, we do want to write this in a certain order. We like to have our y on the left-hand side, that's, that's normal. But we are going to write the x first instead of after the 5. So we're going to have the negative 3x and then plus 5. Still okay with me so far? Now if we had a number in front of y, this is where we'd be dividing. We divide everything by that number. We don't, so, so we're okay. We have this in now, slope intercept form. Can you tell me, ladies and gentlemen, what is my intercept, my y-intercept on this equation? 5. Okay. Now, we're not going to use that. I just want to make sure you're kind of comfortable with that, that number there. What is the slope for this equation? So my m is negative 3. 
Yell with me. That's my slope. Now we're looking for, are we looking for parallel or perpendicular in this particular case? Okay, so watch carefully what we do. After we solve this down for our y, we find our slope, and then we look at whether we're looking for the parallel or the perpendicular. Because on your test, I'm not going to give you both. I'm going to give you one of them, either parallel or perpendicular. You have to know what to do. With parallel lines, we're going to keep the slope exactly the same. So what we're going to do on our problem is, after we find the, the slope here, we're going to say either a parallel slope or perpendicular slope next. We're looking for the parallel slope. What's the slope that's parallel to negative 3? Not, not perpendicular. The slope that's parallel. Negative. It's negative 3. That's right. So the parallel slope is exactly the same. So when we're talking about parallel, really we're just rewriting that. We're just rewriting it for parallel. It's exactly the same thing. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're just rewriting the parallel to put in our heads that, yeah, we're looking for exactly the same slope. These slopes must be the same. Now, okay, well, we now have the slope we're working with. Our slope's going to be negative 3. What do we do now? Do we have a point? What, what's our point? Okay. I don't even have to use this to find a point. I'm given a point already, right? A specific point will be given to you. It has to be. It will be given to you. Have I found the slope? No. I think so. So do I have a point and do I have a slope? Yes. What are you going to use? Hey. That's why those equations are nicely named for us, right? Once you have what you, what, what you fill out the name with, you, you fill out the formula as well. So we're going to use, after this point, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Now, now wait. Do we have an M? I want you to look carefully at something. Am I looking to fill this equation out with this M that I found with my, my uh, formula up here? Or with this slope that I'm, I'm using here? Now, in, in this case, they're the same. But when you get to perpendicular, they're going to be different. You understand that, right? Should I be looking here just from this equation? Or should I be looking at what I am looking for from the problem? This one, really, yeah. Now, in this particular case, since we're talking about parallel, they are the same, right? But if I was looking at perpendicular, I'm not going to go directly from this one. I'm going to look down where it says either parallel or perpendicular slope and use that slope. You with me on this? So here we'll say, okay, I want this slope in that spot. That's what I want. Where are we finding my x1 and my y1, though? Where does that come from? Sure, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was given a point, right? What's my x1 in this case? Okay, somebody else, what's my y1? I really don't have any other choices on that one, right? I'm only given one point, so that has to be there. Let's see if we can plug this in correctly. Some of the right inside of the room, tell me what's the first thing I need to write if I'm going to plug in my equation. Y minus 2, great. Equals what now? Negative. Good. And then what? X plus one. How are you getting the plus one? Okay, very good. So we have to include both the minus and the negative. I think we saw that before yesterday as well, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we have all those signs. We don't lose anything. I'm going to do the extra step so you see where it's coming from. We have y minus 2 equals negative 3 x plus 1. Raise your hand if you're okay getting that far for me. Good. Now this is the point slope, but oftentimes we like to write this in slope intercept. So we're going to have to go down a little bit further and solve this for y. How do I solve this for y? That would be a good first step. So we'll distribute that negative 3. So negative 3x and minus 3. And lastly, what are we going to do? Yeah, if we add 2 to both sides, we're going to have solved this for y. That'll be great. That's what we want.
I'm going to recap this just a little bit about what, what you do in this process. First thing you do whenever you write the equation of a line, you look for a point. It should always be given to you, and it is in our case. The next thing you do, because you have to have a point and a slope to write the equation, you look for the slope. If it's not directly given to you, you'll have two options. The first option, or first thing that could happen, is you're given two points, in which case you would use your slope formula, which I taught you yesterday, and then you use your point slope. No problem. If you're not given two points, what will happen is you'll be given a point and another equation. With that other equation, it will either ask you to be parallel or perpendicular to it. If it's parallel, we solve it for y, slope-intercept form. You take your slope, that's the slope you use. You with me on this? If it's perpendicular, you solve it for y, that's slope-intercept, you take your slope, but then you use the negative reciprocal of that slope. I'm going to show you that in just a little bit. In either case, no matter what, you're going to be using point slope formula at some point. This is why I said we use this 95% of the time, because this, these are almost all of our problems are like this. Okay, So that's why we use this so often. After that, we plug in the appropriate numbers. We get our y1, x1, y1 from our point. We get our slope from our equation. We solve that for y. And then if you're asked to graph it, could you graph that? Yeah, you could graph it with a t-table, but that that kind of take a long way, right? That, that'd be three points. We don't want to do three points anymore. What's our y-intercept here? What was that? So we'd go on the x-axis. If you want to see a really quick graph here, we'd go down to negative one. We'd put a point on the y-axis at negative one. Are you still with me? What is your slope, ladies and gentlemen? Negative what? Hey, look it. What's the slope here? What's the slope here? Did you do it right? Yeah. You can always check, right? Because parallel should have the same exact slope. So we have the same slope here. We know those lines will be parallel. Negative 3 means negative 3 over 1. So if we have negative 3 over 1, that means from this point you'll go down 3, because it's negative. You'll go to the right. One space is always to the right. And that's how you draw your line. Now, I'm going to write another problem up on the board, but I would like you to try one on your own. Let's see if you can make it all the way through on this problem. So, same question. Write the equation containing... Containing that point in parallel to 3x plus 4y equals 1. So go for it. It's very similar. First, I need you to notice that we are given a point like we always will be given one. Next thing I need you to look for is a slope. If you're not given a slope explicitly, you have one of two situations that you're going to follow. Either you're given two points, which we don't have up here, or you're given an equation, which you will need to solve for y. So that's going to be our, our uh, situation in this case. 